Would you please state your full name and spell your last name for the record? Mark Allen Dallas, D-A-L-L-A-S. Officer Dallas, you prepared a statement for today? I have. You may feel free to read that. Your Honor, I've been asked to present a victim impact statement at the sentencing hearing. I am a victim of Matthew Milby, but no more so than you. I'm no more of a victim of Matthew Milby than the entire nation is a victim of Matthew Milby. We are all victims of Milby, of Harris, Clebo. We're all victims of school shooters at Newtown, at Stoneman Douglas, at Uvalde. We're all victims of seamlessly ending militia of school shooters who infect our nation like cancer. They are a disease that prey upon our nation's chronic weakness of political division. They kill innocent school children because our country still cannot muster the collectiveness will to do anything about it. Children will continue to be slaughtered until we care enough to save them. Children will continue to be murdered until we place well-trained school resource officers in every school. Until then, we will remain victims of Milby. We need to ask ourselves some hard questions. What separated Dixon High School from Stoneman Douglas High School? What made the difference between the numbers of attendance at the elementary school graduation ceremony in Uvalde, Texas? and the number of attendants at the Dixon High School graduation ceremony. Why did so many die there while so many lived here? The evil is precisely the same. There was no less evil holding the gun in Dixon than there was holding the guns in bloody school massacres across our country. The evil murderous intent was precisely the same in each one of the schools, including ours just a few blocks away. Matthew Milby has the same heart as Eric Harris. Matthew Milby has the same indiscriminate trigger finger as Dylan Klebold. He has the same deranged intention as Adam Lanzia. There may be differences in their body count, but there is no difference whatsoever in the levels of their dangerousness to our communities. So was I the difference? Was the difference between Uvalde and Dixon that Uvalde didn't have Mark Dallas protecting the students at Dix like Dixon did? I want to say something to you to be the clearest possible, possible way. I want absolutely no doubt, no lack of clarity about how strongly I believe what I'm about to say. Mark Dallas is not the difference. I myself am not the difference. I sincerely become upset and embarrassed whenever the word hero is mentioned in the same sentence as my name. I want you to know why. It's not necessarily humi humility. When you call me a hero or say that, it was I personally who made all the difference at Dixon High School. You make our nation's persistent problem harder to solve. If I, Mark Dallas, am the reason the kids at Dixon High School survived, then we can do very little to save the children in the schools across our country. I'm retired now, and I never was the fastest runner to begin with, and my running speed has only gotten slower over the past few years. So I am not the reason that the kids at Dixon High School survived. The students at Dixon High School survived because long before the shooting occurred, our community possessed the wisdom and the collective will to do something about it. Our police department had grown weary of the countless massacres unfolding throughout our country. So we developed a strong school resource officer program. And then we trained and we trained and we trained some more. For years before this happened, our entire local law enforcement community was trained for May 16, 2018. For years before he walked into Dixon High School with an Uzi, our entire law enforcement community was getting ready for Matthew Milby. We developed an incredible strong school resource officer program. I received the unqualified support of my department, of my school, and we trained within our agency, we trained with other agencies, we trained with school officials and educators. We practiced live fire drills in our school so that the teachers could hear and recognize what gunfire sound like in a school building. We used our video surveillance systems. We checked and locked alternative entry points. We immersed ourselves in the school and developed close and continuous bonds with the children, children we were there to protect. We did active shooter drills. Then we honestly criticized ourselves. Then we did them again. Then we honestly criticized ourselves some more. We practiced and practiced and practiced. We hardened our targets. The last sentence has become a little controversial. Critics say that this is wrong to refer to our school as targets. I will agree with the critics that it's a terribly sad description. It's tragic, it's awful, but it's true. 
The innocent children within our schools are the most precious resource. They are the targets of evil. On May 16, 2018, 182 targets were gathered in the Dixon High School gymnasium to rehearse for their upcoming graduation ceremony. They are the sons and daughters of mothers and fathers who love them dearly. They were gathered to prepare for their commencement ceremony, a celebration of their entry into adulthood. My son was amongst them, but on that morning, he was just 182 of my sons and daughters. Their parents had entrusted all of them to my watch. Today, those same parents entrust those same children to yours. It was a warm, sunny, late Wednesday morning. The gymnasium was filled with excited high school seniors. Its outer doors were closed, but not, lo but not locked of the gymnasium. Outside of those doors was a hallway. Off that hallway was a bathroom that Milby was preparing his onslaught against his classmates. I was standing in the athletic director's office, not remember what we were really talking about, but I'm sure it was an upcoming track event. Then the gunshots. I heard several gunshots in the hallway just outside the gymnasium. I ran from the athletic director's office towards gunshots as I was drawing my weapon. There he was, Milby was holding a fully loaded Uzi in one hand and reaching his hand to the, open the door of the gymnasium with the other. I yelled something, do not remember what I yelled. He turned and ran. I chased him. I ran outside of the school. I ran after him. As I exited the school, he turned and shot at me. He was trying to kill me. I returned fire. I was trying to stop his threat to our community. At some point in the exchange of gunfire, two of my bullets struck him. We ran all the way around the band shell and I lost sight of him. As a car was pulling into the school parking lot, I turned and I looked. I saw Milby attempting to hide near a parked car. I was able to take him into custody at gunpoint. Dixon High School is located next to the Dixon Guard Armory. As I was pointing my gun at the wounded Milby and telling him not to move, two unarmed National Guardsmen ran towards us to assist me. They were unarmed. They did not take the time to grab weapons. They just ran towards the sound of gunshots, unarmed. Those who feel the need to use the words like hero or courage in their description of the events of that day should not forget to include these two brave men, members of our National Guard. Courage is the only thing that will save our children from school shootings. I'm not talking about the courage to run into a hail of bullets. I'm talking about the courage to admit that we have a recurring problem and the guts to do something about it. This is not a gun control speech. I have not said one thing about gun control today. Political debates on divisive topics bog us down and prevent us from finding solutions within our existing reality. We must acknowledge the sad reality that our schools are targets. Our nation must follow the leadership of our local communities. We must unconditionally support school resource officers. We must train, train, and train some more. We must get our law enforcement and our schools ready to defend against Milby. Milby is coming for our children, whether we are ready for them or not. Your Honor, please take this statement in consideration for your sentencing for today. Use this sentence to send a message to the school shooters of our future that freedom will not await them if they survive. Keep the children of this community and all others as safe from him as the law permits. This is my victim impact statement, but I am no more of a victim of a school shooting than you. Like you, I'm also a survivor of a school shooting. The victims of school shootings are laying in small child-sized coffins, their lives cut short by the very same evil that possessed Milby. The victims of school shootings are parents and grandparents, and brothers and sisters who weep over their graves. I'm just nearly one of ne nearly 200 surviving victims of one attempted school shooting. Do not mourn for us, for we are not dead. Mourn for those who died while we lived. Mourn for those who died because we, as a nation, continue to ignore the differences between Dixon and Uvalde, Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Dallas. You may step down.